Oh, they're on a rest. Oh, God. Oh, f oh, three of them rest. I did an hourglass run. <laughs> run away. We can't win. We can't win. Akshan, the rogue sentinel. What is this, Valorant? Akshan, the mid lane assassin. Nah, that just puts him in a box. Auction, the champion that has four passives, four sage revives, and stole abilities from these five champions. Yes, that's more like it. You thought we wouldn't see it, right? But we did. Okay, Akshan is actually an insane champion, and he's the definition of power creep in this game. Some champions are lucky to have one useful passive, and others don't even have that. Riot is getting creative with these new releases, but it's totally clear that they are leaving some champions in the dust. He has a bajillion passives, and you can tell where they got inspiration for, like, all of his abilities. <coughs> Currently, he is hovering between a 47 and 48% win rate in the mid lane, but don't let that distract you from the power that this champion really has. He is one tiny buff from being the strongest laner in the game. With a kit as stacked as his, it's all it takes. But hey, we're not here to talk about that. This video is going to show you how to get that sweet, sweet LP with Akshan, and I'm going to show you how to do it. We're going to take a look at his strengths, his weaknesses, and my top three tips to carry with him in solo queue. This is why Akshan is your ticket to diamond. Also, YouTube tells me that only a small percentage of the people that watch my videos are actually subscribed to the channel. So if you do enjoy the video, please consider subscribing. Akshan's first strength is his range, and it's pretty unique because he's sort of like a successful assassin Caitlyn. Sometimes the meta will change so that people will build lethality on Caitlyn to make her ult and her Q stronger, which can sometimes work in niche situations, but Akshan is overall better than this. Currently, the meta is to build him on hit, but that doesn't negate how strong his Q and his ult are. We rarely talk about the build and the runes in these Ticket to Diamond videos because that is super basic information that will change based on the patch and season, so make sure you have a good grasp on the runes and the best build paths for Akshan in different situations. Anyways, his Q and ult are great long-range abilities that allow Akshan to deal damage from a distance. His Q allows him to safely reveal areas that he doesn't have warded, and if his boomerang hits an enemy champion, it gives him movement speed, so this can help him kite his enemies or catch up to them if he just needs that small burst of speed. His Q will also travel even further if it hits another target, so this thing can fly multiple screens if your enemy lines up perfectly, kind of like Seraphine's ult. This ability is on a short cooldown, so use it as much as possible to dish out damage and keep up your mobility and skirmishes and team fights. Hey guys, are you wanting to make an end of season push for the rank you desperately want but you find yourself hard stuck? Well, if you want to learn the game quickly and get to your ranked goal, then check out the Ticket to Diamond Blueprint to learn the secrets of quickly climbing and ranked and also get access to the private discord to be around others who are on the same journey as you. Don't wait for another season to come and go without getting the rank you deserve. Use code SEASON11 through the end of this season to get $35 off. Come check it out. Auction's second strength is his early poke and trading. Auction has a relatively strong early game because of his main passive. He has a Lucian-like passive where every time he autos, he quickly autos again. He also has a three hit passive where his abilities and autos stack up and upon the third ability or auto, he applies some extra magic damage. And also when he does this, he gets a shield. So all of this put together with the movement speed from his Q allows him to successfully engage in long trades. And if extended fights emerge in the early game, then his two hit auto passive will really shine. At later stages of the game, Akshan relies on quick bursts of his double autos and his E, the damage from his hook shot to deal a lot of damage. After this, Akshan will want to kite in and out of fights with the mobility from his Q and E to reposition. But in the early game, don't hesitate to get some early damage in with your autos and then get movement speed from your Q to disengage. Akshan's third strength is his roaming ability, primarily when he's in the mid lane. Akshan has three abilities that make him amazing at roaming, which is why he's primarily played mid. The first ability is his W. It allows him to enter camouflage if he stays in a bush or near terrain, and this allows him to sneak past ward so that he can get to a skirmish undetected or gank a side lane. He also has his E, which is his marquee ability. He can swing around terrain, dealing damage, and allows him to fly into a side lane and do some damage right away before using his autos or Q. Unfortunately, his E will not let him go over walls, he can only swing around them. But that's probably good because his kit is already so stacked. The last ability that helps him roam is his ultimate. If both of the enemy laners are sitting behind tower at 200 HP, you can walk down and just ult them to get some free kills. This is similar to something Xerath would do by roaming halfway down to bot and just ulting them. His fourth strength is his mid and late game team fighting. A lot of people are hyping up the fact that Auction can revive his teammates, but they don't understand why it's so powerful. It just seems good. And that's because it is, but it really only shines in the later stages of the game. In the early and mid game, death timers aren't crazy long, so spawning a base a couple of seconds early isn't that massive. I mean, it's important and it helps and it gives you a couple more inches, but it becomes game shattering later in the game when there are massive fights around Baron and Elder. At this point in the game, whatever team wins the team fight will have enough time to barrel down a lane and end. However, if Auction is able to stay alive in a team fight and dish out some damage, he has the ability to revive some or all of his team fights by just getting one kill. This can stall game
games out and create massive momentum shifts when it matters most at large neutral objectives. Now, obviously this is a niche situation and 80% of games will be won or lost before these points, but this is where Akshan really shines. So if you're playing this champion and you find yourself at this part of the game, make sure that you have careful spacing and tethering between you and the largest threat on the other team so you can safely dish out damage and stay alive long enough to kill the scoundrel, which will revive members of your team. So even if you die at this point of the fight, some of your team will already have been revived and they can stall a game ending push or help recontest a major objective like Baron or Elder. But remember, don't use your E flippantly in a team fight or to trade a kill and just die. Your revive passive is too valuable to do this, so make sure you use your E to reposition as needed in a fight, but don't use it too aggressively unless you know you can get a kill and live. And this kind of goes for the whole game. Use your E to engage and get some burst damage off and sure fight, but don't use it if you're not 100% confident that you will live after you use it. I got roasted by a streamer for talking about Camille's hookshot in this manner and labeling it a weakness. It's not really a weakness and I concede, so we'll just call it a warning. So be careful with that hookshot and this is your warning to make sure you use it only in situations that you know you can come out ahead. Okay, now let's talk about Auction's weaknesses that you know when you're weaker in the game and when you need to chill out and just get some items. His first weakness is his need for spacing. This is sort of obvious, but something that needs to be mentioned. Like any ADC, Auction is very squishy and will lose most melee fights unless he's astronomically ahead. If Riven, Aurelia, Zed, Talon, or whoever else jumps on him, it is unlikely that he will win the fight unless he did a good job at poking them down beforehand. Because of this, you constantly need to use a mechanic called tethering. Tethering is where you are constantly staying out of range of your opponent by moving forward and backward to stay just outside of their engage range. If you know the distance of Zed's shadow, then you want to constantly mirror his movements while staying just outside of the shadow range so you can avoid damage but still stay close enough to poke him and punish him when he goes for farm. This is a pretty hard mechanic to master, but once you start to get it down, it will make lanes impossible to play for melee champions because you will become so oppressive. Later on in team fights, you will need to wait out longer range engage and CC from champions like Zac, Malphite, Hecarim, Camille, and obviously there are some others. And once those engage cooldowns are blown, you can move in a little bit closer to the action to start getting off some damage and then continue to reposition with your E in order to stay just outside of your opponent's range. An odd but great way to master this mechanic is by playing ARAM. I know it sounds silly, but hang in there with me. ARAM is great because it forces you to watch out for skill shots and pop in and out of range of your opponents to get a small advantage. Sure, it can all go downhill as there are 10 champions just ramming their heads into one another, but if you get a ranged champion, keep an eye on this concept and also just be more open to watching streams and YouTube videos of champions you don't yet understand or haven't played so that you know the different ranges on their abilities. This is especially crucial to watch out for because the range of League of Legends champions just keeps getting longer and longer. This power creep is working in Auction's favor, but also against him. People used to get annoyed at how long Annie's auto range was, but now we have champions like Zac, Camille, and Kane who can travel long distances quickly and get on top of Auction. Thankfully for him, he has a double auto with a three hit passive, so it's very easy to bob in and out of fights and do a lot of damage. All right, Auction's second weakness is hard CC. Now, obviously this is a counter to a lot of carry style champions, but because of how squishy they are, Auction relies on evading CC in order to reposition in fights. If he gets hit by crowd control, then his strength goes right down the drain. I can't help but think that the old Taric would be great at countering him because of his point and click stun, but clearly those two champions were designed in two different eras. Auction's third weakness isn't really a weakness, but more of a warning. Just like Katarina and Talon, Auction has abilities that make it very tempting to just constantly roam and sit in other lanes. And although that can be very beneficial and get you and your team very far ahead, it can slowly lose you the game as you miss out on wave after wave of precious experience and gold. So yes, build a slow push and roam to your bot lane, but don't just randomly leave lane when the wave is building into you or in the middle of the lane. Sometimes you have like a 15 second timer when the wave will freeze for a short time outside of your tower so that you actually have an advantage over your lane opponent if you need to roam to a river skirmish, but more of that info is in the Ticket to Diamond Blueprint, link in the description. Overall, just roam when it makes sense. When you shove your wave and your lanes are ready to follow up, then go for it. The general rule of thumb is to not roam to lanes that are horrendously losing because there might be a good chance that you get 1v2'd and you'll lose a ton of momentum. In 80% of your games, you'll want to continue to snowball your lanes that are ahead and create win conditions out of that. All right, let's talk about Auction's three tips to carry. His first one is to tether during the laning phase and poke out your opponent. It is hard to give a specific tip for laning phase because honestly, playing ranged champions can sometimes form bad habits, especially in the solo lanes, but because Auction was designed from the ground up to be a ranged assassin in the mid lane, it is incredibly important that you learn how to effectively space in lane and stay out of range of your melee opponents. If they can close the gap and get on top of you, then you are essentially wasting your ranged advantage, so learn how to keep that range spacing so that you can poke your opponents down and look for all-ins in lane. 
lane. My second tip to carry is split push and flank. Now, this is a tip I have for many champions because it is important to keep a lead throughout the game and apply as much pressure on the map as possible. It is highly likely that in plat and below, your bot lane will be joining you in the mid lane around minute 15. So be ready to go shove a side lane so that you don't share experience in the mid lane and you can continue to draw pressure in a different lane. And if you aren't sure you can 1v1 everyone on the other team, look to push the side lanes and then rotate mid to help in a skirmish or full blown team fight. Oxen's mobility is so incredibly high, so he is really good at flanking into these fights. Whether he is just using his ult from the jungle or flying in on the back line with his E, he is great at flanking in and assassinating his opponents from a distance. Just make sure that you aren't splitting XP and you're constantly looking to farm jungle camps and side lanes so that you can maintain your gold and experience intake. I guarantee that if you do this, you will be well on your way to being very strong with this champion and making a huge impact in the late game team fights as you get your third and fourth item. We talked a little bit about team fighting earlier, but for my last tip to carry, it is very important that you understand your role as a DPS mid laner with high mobility. Don't just int into the other team because you can get a kill and trade yourself for one for one. Use your ultimate to secure the kill or just let one of your teammates get it. You don't need to start chasing into the other team. Your damage and your revive passive are just too valuable to int into the other team. Just reposition around a fight in order to continue to output some damage on your opponents. That could be the front line or the back line, but as long as you don't die and you can avoid large CC abilities and stay relatively healthy, you're going to allow your team to win a lot more team fights. If you learn how to space well with Akshan both in the laning phase and in the late game team fights, you're going to be in a very good spot to carry yourself out of low elo with this champion. Guys, if you're wanting guys that go even more in depth than this, go check out the Ticket to Diamond Blueprint where we lay out everything you need to know in order to climb. You'll get added to the private discord where we talk all things climbing ranked and we do consistent VOD reviews and coaching sessions in order to take your game to the next level. So don't miss out on this incredible offer of getting $35 off when you use code season 11 through the end of the season. You'll want as much time as possible to learn and then apply what is in the course so you can get to that rank you want by November. As always, it's been Snowda. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.